Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new episode of Motion Tutorials about getting started in 3D modeling in Cinema 4D. So if you're not familiar with Cinema 4D at all and you want to learn about some of the tools, or if you're a Cinema 4D user but you haven't really dove into a lot of the 3D modeling tools, this will be a great one for you to learn about getting started in 3D modeling and a lot of the shortcuts that are bundled with Cinema 4D for this sort of thing. There's all sorts of modeling shortcuts that I use all the time. And once you figure them out, it can really save a lot of time. So we'll start by building this house model from scratch, starting with the cube and go over a lot of tips from there. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and get started on building this one. So here we are in Cinema 4D with our finished house model with some pretty nice little details on it and some nice little beveling throughout. So let's just get started and get right to it. I'll create a new file. And to get this started, we're just gonna grab a cube. And what we wanna do is add some segments to this over here in our attributes panel. So I'm gonna go segments three by three by three. And we can't see anything because we need to turn on our display lines, which is up here. Or a quick shortcut is if you do N, A, N, B, it will bring up this menu and let you quickly cycle through those. So NB will get that on. And we wanna be able to distort this geometry. Right now it's still a cube. So what we need to do and one of the fundamental things of modeling in Cinema 4D is the difference between objects like this that are a cube and using this make editable or pressing C. And that converts the object into just the points, lines, and polygons. So it no longer has those cube attributes. It's now just the geometry. And now what we can do is grab our polygons with either our live selection or our rectangle selection and move, distort, and adjust those. And we can further adjust this geometry. So what we wanna do first is create a little door down here to get started, but we don't want it this shape. So what we need to do is pull in these two loops and to get this whole loop selection what we can do is use one of our first shortcuts if we press u it opens up with this huge menu of selection options and these are great these are things to use all the time so you don't always have to be going into the select menu and then finding it so we want to press u and then l and that's going to bring up a loop selection we can grab this one and then shift grab this one and now if we move rotate or scale those around they're going to scale uniformly and we can look at our front view and open this up and just scale these in. And let's make sure it gets to this grid line about right here. And that way we can adjust that geometry symmetrically. So what we wanna do next is get our polygons. And we can also get these tools by holding V and going up to tools and modes and grabbing these. So this is also a really quick little fly out menu in Cinema 4D. So we'll go polygon and I'm just gonna click and grab that one. And we don't wanna move it in, we wanna extrude it. So there's two extrude tools that we'll use a lot in 3D modeling in Cinema 4D. One is inner extrude, which I can get by pressing I. And what that's gonna do is if I pull left, it's gonna extrude this geometry inward. And then if I press E or to get my move tool, now I have this extra polygon. But before I do that, I wanna extrude this back. And the tool for that is regular extrude, which is D. And again, if I just drag left or right in my window, not on these move tools, it will extrude that in or out. And you can see I got my little options here that I also could just use it in this menu, which is a good option if you wanna be more precise. So we'll just pull this back, go into model mode. And now we have our little door and it's centered within this because we grabbed those loop selections. So that's looking good. Now we wanna cut up this geometry a little more so we can add some windows up in here, but we didn't add to those extra loops in the beginning. So we need to add in some extra little lines to be able to cut those in. And the way we can do that is getting our knife tool, which we can get by pressing K or M, which gives us our full modeling shortcuts, which is another great menu, and then K. And what we wanna do with this is grab our cube, get into points, lines, or polygons and we don't need anything selected and what we want to do with this is get our modeling tool up with k and change this mode from line to loop and then if i drag around you can see it's going to let me create a loop and if i click it's going to create a cut of geometry all the way around that and i want to do this again pretty evenly so what i'll do is let's actually first just grab this 
loop selection of edges. So I'll get UL again, move that up exactly to this grid line. And then again, I'll get my knife tool with K and I'm gonna go two grid lines up, two grid lines over this way, and then two grid lines over this way. And that's gonna give me the geometry. And then I can get my polygon mode, get my selection, and then click and shift click, grab these. And I can do that inner extrude process again with both of these selected. So it'll do the same for both. So I'll press I for inner extrude and then D for regular extrude, drag back. And then we get our little windows cut in here. Now it looks a little weird. So what we can do is adjust the size of our whole house and pull these windows down a bit by grabbing just a row of lines or edges. And I want to grab my rectangle selection and I'll get my cube and get into points mode. And now what I want to do is grab all of these two rows and pull them up. But by default, it's just gonna grab these from the front. So what we wanna do on our rectangle selection attributes is uncheck this only select visible elements because that's not gonna let us grab everything quickly that's behind this. So if we uncheck this, click and drag, then you can see it's gonna select everything behind this. And this is a great way to work in our front, right, and top views to quickly be able to select everything that's exactly behind those points. So just grab those and make this a little taller and maybe pull these and pull this down a little. And that way, again, I'm keeping everything even, everything is nicely scaled, and I can know things are not getting off. So now let's create a quick roof for this. And we can do that by just, again, by just grabbing a cube. And I'll pull this up, scale it down. And when we're still on our basic objects, we have these little orange dots that are our scaling options and we could go down here and scale these or we can pull these little orange dots to visually scale this. So I'll again, look at my four views and I just wanna scale it to probably about one grid line, which we could also just type in at 10 over here. And then I wanna make it a little bigger on the X axis than my whole house. So I'll just drag this off, set it on top. And now we wanna be able to bring this up in the center. So we could add more segments or we could press C to make this editable and use that knife tool again to just cut an extra subdivision into this. So I'll grab my cube, that's my roof, press K, make sure I'm in points, edges, or polygons mode. I'm just gonna check to make sure this is on loop and I'll just center this and click. And then I can get my rectangle selection, grab points, and I'll just drag this up and I can go to model mode and just drop this on top of my house. Now I want my house to exactly meet up with this roof. I don't want this extra space. So how we can get those to go exactly onto this line is if we turn on snapping here. So I'll enable snap. And then when that's enabled, we have all these different objects for things we can snap to, like vertex edges, as well as the work plane and grids. So what I wanna do for this task is I'll make sure vertex and edge snap is on. And then with my house geometry, I'm gonna get points, get my rectangle selection, grab these ones that aren't matching up. And if I zoom in and pull this, you can see it's going to snap exactly to that line of the roof. And I can just do the same for all of these. So they'll exactly snap to that and I'll know that they're locking on. And this is a really good way to line things up as well as to model stuff with reference splines or objects like this. So we can have another object and be able to get this. Now we don't have enough geometry on this polygon. There's no cut there. If we look here, we still have this little hole. So we need an extra line here, but I don't want it going all the way through my house. I don't want to have to deal with an extra polygon here. So what we can do is just grab these polygons right here. So I'll click and drag. And you might notice that I'm not grabbing those even though I'm overlapping. And that's another little tip with this attribute menu. By default, what it's going to do is only select the polygons that you've completely selected but I actually just want to be able to grab a little piece of these and have it know that's what I want. And that's what this tolerant selection means. So if I click that on and then drag, you can see even though I'm selecting partial parts of the polygon, it's still going to pick it up. 
And it's a really good way to work back and forth with that rectangle selection on. And now I want to use my knife tool again. So I'll go get that with the K key. But I don't want to do a loop because that's going to go through my hole. And now if I do a loop, because I have restrict to selection on, it's only going to cut that in my selected geometry. So if I had that off, even though I have these polygons selected, it's going to cut that through my whole house. So just like the selection checkboxes, it's really important to notice some of these and remember what you need it to do. One other way we could do this is if we go to our knife tool and change it to line, we can take a look at this from our top view and we'll click once and then click again and draw a line through these. And it's going to cut that line in the same way and just do it on those top ones so that there's just an extra point there. And then I have a five-sided thing, which isn't as great, but it is one option to know as I'm just trying to make a point to go over all of these different ways to cut up geometry if you're just getting started with modeling. So now that I have those, I can go to my selection tool again, and I also could get my live selection and just click and paint on these. And again, I'd want to make sure I pay attention to this only select visible elements checkbox. So I'll uncheck that, click and drag, and then I'm going to get these other ones and I can make sure it's snapping exactly to that point right here where those two things meet. And since I have snapping on, I can get really exact and really drop it right onto that point. And now what I could do is just grab my roof and it'd probably be a good time to rename these. So I'll name this roof and rename this house. With my roof, I want it a little bigger on the front too. So I'll press T to get my scale tool and just scale this uniformly. And now you can see the snapping is kind of causing problems. So I can just globally turn snap off over here. And it'll scale this a little bigger. And then we're just gonna move it down just a little. So that way I know that it's intersecting a bit with my house and we're not gonna have anything showing up. Now, if we do an area render with option or alt R and take a look at this, it's all the geometry, but these are just very harsh lines and there's no beveling. And with 3D modeling, we want a lot of small little micro bevels. And there's a couple ways to do that. One is with the bevel tool, which is a great thing to know about when we're really modeling 3D geometry. And the way we can do that is if I'm going to grab my house and I want to select some edges that I'm going to bevel. So I'll grab this edges tool, get my loop with UL and I'll grab this one and shift click this one. And then I'm just going to get my live selection and hold shift and just grab these four additional lines. And then I'm going to press MS to get my bevel tool. And how this works is if I drag to the right, you can see it's beveling this. And as I do that over here in our attributes, we can change the offset. So we can make this exactly 0.5 if we want and then change the subdivisions and that will add our geometry. And then if we do a quick area render, we can see we're getting nice beveling and it's going to catch light better. And that's really important for 3D modeling. However, in Cinema 4D, there's this new bevel deformer, which if we're doing lots of little micro bevels on a model like this is a really great way to deal with this. So I'll just undo all of that. And how we can do that is I'm going to grab both of these. I'll press Alt G to put them in a null and I'll rename this whole house. And then I'm going to get this bevel deformer over here from our deformers right here, drop that into this group. And by default, it's going to look a little weird because it's beveling every single line. But what we can do down here in our attributes is check on use angle. And it's going to clean up those extra ones. And basically what it's going to do is only add that beveling if the angle of that is above 40 degrees. So if we drag this down to zero, it's going to do all of them. And we can just push this up a little. So since we're dealing with all angles like this, we don't need it quite at 40. And the nice thing about this is we can add that offset and subdivision uniformly. So we could make this offset 0.5 and subdivisions crank those up to get a lot of detail. And that's going to add this to every edge above that angle. And if we do an area render, we get that nice beveling on all of it that we could check on or off.
So we are moving right along with our intro to Cinema 4D. And if you wanna keep learning more about some of these introductory techniques, be sure to check out part two of this video where we'll talk about adding the window sills, doing some tricks with some commands like symmetry and bools for cutting objects out, as well as getting a little more advanced with adding in a cloner for the sidewalk. Definitely check that one out. And if you like the tutorials, you can subscribe on YouTube as well as let me know what you think of the tutorials on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. And be sure to check out some of my other videos on Cinema 4D, motion graphics, and all sorts of stuff in the VFX industry. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in part two. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.